G'day, this is Norm Glenn, and I want you to meet Dobby. Dobby has had a very tough time prior to joining with his own owner just a few months back. He was a racehorse and he was only ever trucked. And when it came time for him to be transported on a float load, a supposed expert beat him into the float uh, twice. And that ended up in Dobby falling down, uh, totally traumatized, psychologically traumatized. And it's no wonder that in the end that the owner um, trying kinder methods couldn't get Dobby anywhere near the float and certainly couldn't get him on and uh, we can perfectly understand that. So I want to give you this overview of how this training progressed because we had to move Dobby on the day. He had to move off the property uh, so the pressure was on and um, so luckily he was able to respond and there was a good result at the end. So I hope you enjoy this overview of Dobby's training. So let's get started. Okay, so before we start the video, you're going to see um, in the early stages here, well, through the whole process, I use a whip. But at the start here, you're going to see that um, Dobby doesn't want to get near the float. And it's important that we work uh, near the float and have him accept working near the float. Now, some people would use a long line to start with, but the problem with that is the potential for the horse to run in you, into you and not having control. So I prefer to keep hold uh, fairly short to start with and block uh, the horse from running over the top of me or running into me. So it's just a safer way, even though it might look uh, to the untrained eye, it might look like it's a little bit harsh, but it's not actually. And it's just part of Dobby's total excitement or fear, I should say, really, at, at being around and near the float. And so we did, even before this, we did do some uh, training away from the float to make sure that he knew uh, what I was asking for, and that was all very successful. Uh, but then when we brought him towards the float, uh, he came, you know, he became naturally very anxious to start with. Now, with regards to my equipment, you'll notice that I wear gloves, which are, I do recommend when you're training horses to get on a float, if they're, particularly when they're having problems. It's best to put them on the start and not, not assume. And secondly, that I do use a whip. Now, that's a 110 centimetre dressage whip. And if you notice very carefully what I'm using, I don't strike or hit Dobby. I tap him very lightly with it sometimes. Uh, but mostly what I do with it is actually direct the whip as a pointer almost to the top of his hip. And so when I'm asking him to come forward, and there's times in the video where you'll see that he's a bit reluctant to come forward. And so what I do is actually point that, um, I'll, I'll tap him on the shoulder if need be to come forward. But in terms of my energy, I'm focusing on driving that hip forward. Um, anyway, he, uh, he responds to all of that, as you'll see. So we'll start this process, uh, starting the video. So we're working. We're working close to the front, uh, rather to the rear of the float there. And Dobby uh, certainly didn't want to stand still at first. And he just wanted to basically crash bang into me. There I'm using the, the whip lightly to ask him to come forward. But he's what he wants to do here, you'll see here, is run into me or run away from the float effectively. And I'm not letting him to do that. What I want him to do is bend around me. And that did become successful. So then we were able to extend uh, the line and do a little bit, I guess, of what some people would call, or most people would call probably more of a lunging process. But the idea here is I want to get him to stand still. And, uh, and there's a lot of stand still in this. this. This video is only going for about 20 minutes. And but the training session was three and a half hours. So it's hard to squeeze it all down effectively into, into just a short period of time. But you see there he's walking now by the float quite relaxed. And that's what we want to start with. So the step one is you've got to have the horse accept the the surroundings or the or being near the float. 
And then step two, which is what we're starting with here, is to start to get uh, the horse to actually accept the float itself and the internal space of the float. So typically, horses aren't so bad at being near the float but it's this part here that they start to struggle with and this is usually the start off point. And you can see there Dobby rearing and spinning back and he did that a lot of times. I've edited it all out, but he did that a lot. And so it was pretty taxing. Now finally Dobby's prepared to start investigating the float. And so that's much appreciated by me and a lot easier for him as well. But that doesn't mean he's going to accept it at this stage. And so you'll see here, I'm giving him time there. He's actually licking and chewing, or he was. And so I leave him alone whilst he's processing that. And to ask him forward, it's slight contact on the lead line and directing that whip towards the hip to ask him to come forward. When he goes back, it's holding pressure. We're not trying to pull him forward. It's holding pressure, holding the pressure there until he comes off that pressure and quickly release that pressure. That's the important thing. Now, also what's really critical for yourself uh, if you're attempting this sort of thing is to be present and centered. So you'll see here when I stand at the float itself, I'm very relaxed, very calm. I don't get upset by what the horses do. And just here, there's a process you can go through. Uh, if you look up Eckhart Tolle, you'll find out how to be, he, he runs a thing called living in the now and um, how to be present. And there's, there's things like mindfulness and all those sorts of things that you can use. Well, you want to do that in these times when the horse is standing still and when you're asking the horse just to stand still and be there. And you'll see here uh, in a minute or two, the horse Dobby will actually start coming towards me. So there he's pulling away. I'm just holding the pressure there. And now he's come off that pressure. And so he walks forward, we give him a pat. And this really is a patience thing. And even watching this video, you know, some people aren't gonna have the patience to watch this 20 minutes, let alone three and a half hours worth of training. But you have to have patience because this is not about your time, even though I was there to get the horse moved on the day, at the, end of the at the end of the day, when it comes down to what I'm trying to do here, it's I'm only hoping that it's all going to work because I can't force the horse to get on the float. And at the end of the day, there are some horses, I've, I've had 19 horses over like 30 years that I haven't been able to get the training done in three and a half hours. So that's a pretty good strike rate. But every now and then, a horse comes along and uh, shows you that uh, you need to revise your strategy a little bit. Because every horse, you have to adopt or adapt a little bit. Now, see here, the horse is standing still and didn't want to come forward. So the idea is not to try and pull him offline, but to move him off to the side a little bit to get him to move his feet. So now it's just, once he's settled a bit here, there'd be a little light pressure here asking him to come forward and we'll see what, and I'd be kicking, uh, sorry, kissing at him or maybe pointing the whip. Uh, and I do that the least amount possible. But now you can see that Dobby has finally decided to start to investigate the inside of the float properly. properly. And once he starts to go in, we're going to then progress to step three, which is to have what I call assisted loading. And that is where you know, I'll go inside the float with the horse. Eventually we want the horse to be uh, self-loading, but initially we need to go through most of the time, not 100% of the time, but most of the time we need to go through what I would call assisted loading so that they get that confidence and they get a bit of support from you to start with. And then you'll see what happens. now. At this stage here, when the horse is uh, actually looking like coming in, it's important not to let him in. And that might sound at odds with what you want to do, but the worst thing that can happen with a horse that's struggled to get in is to allow them all the way in, because then they get stuck in there, they're not sure how to get out, and that's when problems can really occur. 
So you need to do your best if a horse really wants to try and get in. And every now and then I get a horse that, and Dobby is one of these horses here where once he made up his mind, he, he pretty much wanted to try and walk on straight away. But I needed, like here, I need to block him and not let him all the way on and make sure that he's comfortable at backing out. Now we'll talk more about the backup, but what's critical with backing is that you do not push through the head to get the horse to back out. You can hold, um, you know, the snap underneath the head stall, but you need to direct the pressure through the shoulder and not through his head. Now just here, <laughs> we're going really well, but uh, he was deciding to get on the float and then he decided to have a little melt down there. And that's fine. Um, that's what happens. You know, it's not, once you get to a certain stage, it doesn't mean that you're just going to sail on through. There are, there are times when the horse will have little thoughts of regression uh, and sometimes major thoughts of regression. So you can get two or three really, really big regressions where you might have advanced to this stage and then suddenly that it absolutely goes pear shaped and you feel like you're going back to square one. And so you just have to work through that. And now finally, and you know, like this is a quick video, this is a summary. Uh, so there's a lot missing because there's a lot of time spent having the horse stand outside the float. And you can see I just relax there uh, up against the right, uh, the uh, center piece or the center divider. And uh, so a lot of times uh, standing in, a lot of times standing out. Now, initially I was on the other side of the center divider, but now I moved the center divider over and I've got onto that, what, what's the left-hand side from this view here. And that's so that Dobby can come all the way forward uh, into the float. Now there, he's backing out a little quicker. Uh, not that we want that, but he's chosen to do that. I wasn't putting any pressure on him to move out at all. Now, I did ask him, but he chose the speed. I don't choose the speed. So in here now, we want to give um, the horse as much comfort as possible and cause the horse to have ease. So again here, really, really allowing the horse to dictate how fast he comes out. I'm happy if he just does one step at a time. If he took one step, stopped, and then another step, of, um, you know, like 30 seconds later even, and, and then another step, that would be brilliant. We want the horse to discover how to load or how to unload from the float as well as how to go in here. So here we can see I'm holding pressure on Dobby for him to come forward and then he decides he's going to try and jump down. He was a bit with his legs. We couldn't work out whether he was just anxious uh, with that. There was a lot, of, there were a lot of big blowflies hanging around and they did seem to annoy him. So we couldn't quite work out exactly what that kicking was all about. Okay, so what's important in here now? He's come all the way forward, so I'm patting him and just giving him some ease and you'll notice that I'm working back towards the float and and patting him all the way down to his rump and then I'll move forward again and pat him and just have him stand there and this doesn't happen straight away first time that you move back down the rump the horse might come out um, so you just got to repeat the process and get to the point where the horse is comfortable and will stand there before then you can step out of the float like I'm doing here and it's important to be able to stand out the back of the float like I was doing there. Now here's one of Dobby's first attempts uh, to self-load by himself. Now he's backed away, I'm holding the pressure, I'm asking his hip to come forward. I'm not just waving it at him, I'm asking his hip to come forward. So it's important then here to push the nose in towards the float. Don't let him pull his nose towards you and run over the top of you or anything like that. Direct that nose in to the float. You'll notice I don't hold underneath the snap. I give the horse plenty of room, um, but I keep well to the side there, keep out of the way, and 
feed that rope in as he's going. Now he stopped here, so I pat him, give him comfort. Now I'm gonna ask for him to go forward. And as I explain to the owner here, <laughs> even though that's great and that's good, at that time of me tapping, I'm just hoping that the horse will go in. There's no guarantee that he will. He could make the decision to come back, but luckily on that occasion, he did decide to come in. And I won't say most horses do, some do, some don't, or at first they don't, but then over time with repetition, uh, they, they do and they will. You've got to give them that time though, like the, the horse rested there. If you rewatch that video, he rested there. And then I made up my mind. I thought he was comfortable enough to ask forward again, and it was successful. And then I'd spent a lot of time standing at the back of the float, five, six minutes whilst he's in there. Now, now that he's uh, self-loaded, it's time for me to come into the front of the float. I bring the rope forward um, so that it's, as he comes out now, the rope can drag, he can drag the rope out. And that means then that I can come out of that float and meet him at the back and just pick up the rope. And most horses, they'll just stand there and uh, and you, you can get out fast enough to get around the back whilst they come out. And so now, self-loading again. So he's still reluctant at that stage. And you say, how good is that? <laughs> Alrighty, before we get to the final uh, little bit of credits here, I just want to say that um, by no means, Dobby's not trained there by any means whatsoever. Um, he's, he's at the point where he is self-loading, but we stopped the video there only because I was running out of battery. Um, and what happened from there on was that I needed to make sure that uh, Dobby was loading a bit better than that, which he did but also that he could accept the uh, movement of the float whilst the back's down without the trailer actually moving or, or, or under tow. So what I do is I gently shake the back of the float. So I'd be standing out to the side where I am and just shaking the float a little bit. And it's just very, very small to start with. And if, if uh, the horse came out, well, then you put the horse straight back in and then you start again. But the idea is to actually stop shaking the float before the horse comes out. If you think the horse is going to come out, stop shaking the float. And you have to get the horse comfortable with that movement, in my opinion, before you put the back up and certainly before you drive off. Now, we know a lot of horses accept float loading quite well. People load them on, uh, they walk them in. Um, and they don't have any troubles and good luck to them. But there's a big percentage, well, I won't say a big percentage, but there is a percentage out there, whether it's 10 or 20%, I don't know. But certainly a lot of horses are traumatized um, by the fact that they've been put in the float and then the back's been put up and they've never been given any chance to get used to the movement of the float and to be able to escape that float. They need that chance to be able to escape if they're still afraid of that movement. So you have to get them solid at being able to stand in there and accept that movement whilst uh, you're outside the float and the doors are not secured. And then you have to go through the process of having them accept the doors of the float being the breaching gates or whatever you've got at the rear if you've got those uh, and the ramp. And you need to do that very slowly. So just lift the ramp a little bit, put it down, then lift it up a bit more and put it down, making sure that your horse is comfortable. And if it's not, the horse will tell you because it'll come out. That means you went too far too quick. So you have to back off and you have to just do it a little bit more gently and then gradually build up again. Anyway, I want you to really understand this, this was three and a half hours of training you know so this this is just a glimpse of how it all goes and so step one making sure the horse is ready to be around the float and be able to work around the float step two have the horse start to investigate the float and be comfortable looking inside the float etc step three assisted 
uh, loading. Step four is unassisted loading, where he's walking on by himself. And then step five is getting him used to the, sensa the sensation of the float, which is movement and the tailgate being up, etc. the ramps being up and him being closed in before he travels. And I guess there's step six too, which is post that training, once the horse is at that stage, then there is a procedure that you need to go through then for reinforcement or repetition. It's probably a better word. I don't like the word reinforcement, re repetition. So that the horse becomes what I call a rock star float loader, where it's solid, it'll do it all the time. And, um, and then you can show off to all your friends. <laughs> all right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. And I'll just play the rest of this video that I had lined up.